a series of videos on sketching for MET at Saint. And today we're going to sketch this carabiner. It's, there we go. So just a generic carabiner, uh, nothing crazy. Uh, quite a common thing. Uh, it's got a locking gate, which fairly laboriously uh, screws up and shuts. Uh, it's held at the bottom, extent-wise, by a snap ring, which stops it going too far. Um, we have a quite convoluted uh, structure. I forget what this is called suddenly. Um, it'll come to me. Uh, it's by a fairly well-known manufacturer. I try not to look at their logo too much. Um, essentially, we're going to be drawing this in a more sketchy, almost arty, perhaps, uh, way. Uh, I'm going to draw it in its normal orientation. Uh, we have a landscape page here, it's quite big. Uh, but I'm going to draw it upright so it fits onto the screen okay. Uh, from time to time we might shift around. Essentially I'll draw it in this orientation, in a sort of a diametric. Begin in here, uh, discover a unit and then go ahead and draw the rest. Uh, we're not going to be exact here, so we're not going to spend too much time on excessive construction because uh, we're going to be trying to show the masses and uh, the sort of general uh, uh, details of the object. So we'll be talking about the knurling here, snap ring, this rivet, it's holding the pivot intact. And for what we can see, we'll spend a bit of time talking about this a specific profile. Uh, we're going to draw it closed uh, and about half shut. So just where it would clear the gate. So that's the plan. Uh, there will be, of course, a interesting point of interest through the center of this. I'm going to be using a fairly thick pencil to get set up. And this is on a large sheet. I don't know how big it is exactly. Uh, I think it's about probably 14 by 22, 24, something like that. So uh, this is our midline. So we're going to draw our main line through the middle here first. So let's zoom out. There's our sheet. So quite large. I'm going to draw slightly off center to the left. So our oh, main shackle line will be there. I got it going quite rough to begin with. This is a how to explore the shapes without getting too worried about perfectly straight lines and all the rest. What I just drew is this. So I'm going to keep on referencing this from time to time. Key thing is this shape, which is a cylinder underneath with a bunch of cutouts. So we're going to start with that. If we look at this part with a ruler, uh, just use a piece of paper for a ad hoc ruler. I uh, can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just cut uh, tear oh not very well. Tearing off a couple a second, hopefully be better. Use our ruler. Um just to get a feel for this, I've got a bad side here. So I'm just gonna get a feel for the size of this thing. fairly square with some lobes. Uh, so we're going to be using a diametric. And again, same as if you watched the previous video, we'll be using the same thing uh, for the bracket. This sketch will be much rougher. So we're going a parallel, vertical line stay vertical. Lines up to the right are at 15 or so and lines up to the right sorry up to the up to the right is 15 up to the left is 45 or so and it's about two-thirds so this is a cube so there's a bit of foreshortening without really doing perspective at 45 degrees so this is our plan so we can see that better 
So we're at 15 up, 45 over, and one to one to two thirds. You can see how blunt my pencil is here. So not a sharp pencil. I'm drawing fairly light to do some construction. So, yeah. so we have essentially a kind of a square here. So I'm going to make my unit about this long, which will be the length of my uh, gate. So this is that size. And I can transfer that across immediately and keep track of what's going on. That's my unit for some reason zero to one instead of one to zero, but whatever. So continuing on with that. Now, there are other videos that I've drawn with much more detail than this about how this works, but essentially what we have here is an ellipse in kind of an isometric at both ends. So that's our start, that's this part. We're gonna have some extra material up here. Hopefully that fits in, looks like it will. So we're gonna have, again, add about 15. So I'm gonna go ahead here and try and lay in, again, this is from the top to the top. I can try and lay in here what our, if we were to draw a square here, where it would go. So I'll put about 15 from both ends. Use our unit. And just make sure we're doing fairly parallel work, it's not bad. Now we're going to have a larger, so if we look at this shape here, it's in this angle, so we're going to have a piece going up. That's about our maximum. So just keeping track of things. So our maximum is about here, so we have a shape which kind of comes around. It gets narrower as it goes down. Comes out the bottom. Again, it flares out in both ways, so it's widest at this point, and then up. So that's my goal here, using this point as a point of interest. This will most likely end up being more or less the inside of our part. And we'll have some stuff outboard. So the shape's looking okay. So I'm going to concentrate on here for a bit uh, and try and get our, our shape sorted out. So by just kind of feeling our way through here, drawing this fairly complex assembly without getting too uh, worried about uh, things and focusing. So this will start quite light and stay quite light for a while uh, as we go along. So if we have our structure like this, we're going to be having a cross angle at 45. So you can start to see where this all is starting to hang together. So parallel, parallel. So this is our, for example, pin in here. So if we find the edges, you can start to say where our parts are going to start living. So this could be the rivet. Uh, there is a slot here at the rivet, which goes above. I know it's hard to see on, even for me. There's a kind of a hole, it goes right through. It's more or less straight. So we have a shape. Which is on the front. It goes past the rivet quite a bit. So just kind of feeling it out here. Now, notice how messy this is. Just trying to figure out where these shapes live. And will we be able to see the outside of that? No. So, continuing on up. Right above that slot is this pin, or sorry, snap ring. Pin, it's not pin. So we have our snap ring above that. We have this larger uh, sort of sli uh, threaded uh, sleeve, goes up and down. 
and I'm not going to worry yet where the top of that is. I'm just laying in this sort of general shape. Now, coming from the top here, we've got the same sort of arrangement. We've got a slot which will map in. But this time it's got a more convoluted uh, shape, so it kind of comes down. Kind of see it, maybe. It's hard to see. It comes down and goes out to hold that uh, matching shape from the frame. That's the word. So there's a frame there that's holding this, and it goes in not all the way. So it goes through and stops. So it actually goes up to and stops inside the part before it makes it out the backside. So that's our negative shape there. The frame comes out of this. I'm going to draw a bit of the frame here as well. The frame actually sticks proud out of this hole and kind of heads up and off immediately to the outside shapes. And that's our beginning of our frame. So we have this complicated shape in here, which the frame kind of protrudes out of. The frame plunges in and kind of comes down. So I'm starting to discover these shapes and I'm just looking at the part constantly trying to figure out where things are going. There's a interesting front piece here. The front. So the eraser is going to come in handy in a while here, but for now, just trying to get a beginning. There's a sort of a prow, kind of comes across and leads up. So I'm going to kind of start to sway across uh, into the frame from the gate. Focusing on the gate again for a moment. Under the gate is for where we have it sketched, the underside of our um, shroud. No. I don't know what you call that sleeve, I suppose. And it's quite a bit bigger. So that's our inside. It's a little bit around and a bigger sort of ellipse. The ellipse is this surface, circular surface, stays fairly close, quite a bit down, and then is res, uh, res, what is all my English words here, loses its diameter as we go along. Just trying to keep this somewhat symmetrical. And somewhat tidy. Which is a relative word with this pencil. It's not bad so far. Uh, we do have a, cha a chamfer here, which is not a fillet, but a chamfer, so it's flat. We're going to have to emphasize that later with some contour lines. Snap ring is clear-ish. I'm going to draw it a little bit further out to make it obvious what is going on here. And trying to make the shapes we know are in there emerge out of the, the sort of murk of all these lines. So again, there's our snap ring starting to emerge. From time to time we'll have a look at the, the actual lines that are starting to happen here. They're very rough, which is okay. Now, from time to time, we can use an eraser here to keep our sketch from getting too much out of control. So, for example, I have this very clear front face on the frame here. That is one of its biggest features, this carabiner. This sets it apart from the others. I'm actually going to emphasize that by just erasing the sort of rough surrounds. We can also use a thinner pencil. This is also a B to kind of put a sharper edge on things if we need from time to time. So there's my edge. I don't know if I can get this to light up. Uh, there it is. So kind of this smoother 
front. Uh, this is obviously going to go through the rope. You don't want any edges on here or whatever it's being attached to. So always trying to minimize uh, problems with its functionality. Now, if we look at this carefully, we can see there's actually a sharper corner in here. Kind of comes off. If I look at this a bit further, see I've made some errors here. This thing only goes about that high and then heads off. So I'm just going to fix that up. So again, no, no big deal. And so if we need a bigger piece of eraser, that's fine. So just come in here, kind of tidy it up a bit. Always looking at the real part. So I can see here that kind of screwed up, went too high. And then this comes up and heads off across. Is it too angled or not angled enough? So we just add shapes used, drawn from the shoulder as best we can. Trying to keep everything under control, it looks better. And there's a kind of a corner in here, kind of, not a, not a sharp corner. But at this point, there is a bit of a bulge in the part. So this face in here kind of bulges out and kind of starts the spinal shapes that is this particular carabiner's profile. So again, using the eraser, I can almost do it uh, fairly, quite a bit actually, more than we would have in our normal sort of more controlled sketching where we, we plan and map across and all that sort of stuff. This time we're just focusing on task at hand. So some contour lines from time, or sorry, control lines from time to time to figure out where things are and also to remind ourselves and the viewer of what we're seeing here. So this line, parallel in reality, parallel in the sketch. Just going to finish off a bit of the lower contour here before I start getting into the bottom part of the machine. Now again, the usual routine, or maybe for the first time, the usual routine here is we would like to draw what's closest to our eye first and what's later. Uh, later. So the further back it is, the more likely I'm to leave it. So we're going to start to expect to see some of the frame coming out from underneath here. Again, having a look here, we can see, see if I can get this to light up again. There's a flat plane on this. So what we need to do here is make sure this is very clear. It comes up and through and kind of emerges out. So again, parallel reality, parallel in the sketch. It's rounded. So again, just in the middle. That's a plane on the frame where it sticks in. So we can see something's happening in here. If I want, and I'm not erasing here, I'm just lightening. Start to lighten these edges so that we can see what's going on. Again, if something becomes too dirty. Not bad. There's some small problems up in here. So I'm just going to fix while I'm at it. Should be a little more vertical. So come back and fix that up if we aren't pleased with this. Problems in here. I'll come back later. I'm not completely comfortable with this. This is also too angled, I can see in here. So just lighten it because I've kind of drawn it quite dark through there. So straighter lines, parallel, parallel. Feels better. 
and then we can just fix up the edges. Again, we're not really finalizing anything yet. For example, this rivet is still fairly vague, but we're just continuing on here. Now, we can see the back side here bumping out. So this is, in a way, kind of comes around inside. So it's not a bad habit to show the viewer what is kind of connected. Underneath here is a flat surface that comes off of this. It kind of matches this bottom of the gate. Out of this comes a thicker piece. Which kind of matches in here again. So we have this sort of multi-face effort. And then our gate and our frame comes around. Now, we're not getting too worried yet what exactly I'm sketching in here. CAD is eventually going to come after this, so we would never give this to a manufacturer. But we are just trying to show the viewer what's going on in here. Smooth, sort of a, again, we want to give the viewer the best chance to understand what's going on in here. We have a thicker uh, frame profile at the top. It's good. It thins down, kind of like an I beam, and then not as not as thick at the bottom. So this what I'm drawing is not correct. It's more I beam shaped. It kind of hides and goes around the part. So. Where this is exactly, I'm going to try and discover. It's fairly thickens up slightly as we go along, not too much. Not bad. Now, as we go around the bend here, if we draw another one maybe in the middle, we're going to be having a fairly constant profile. It's going to come kind of emerge down over here. And we're going to have the same thickness on the outsides, which is going to be again hidden by the profile rolling around to the back. So this is not looking too bad. I'm going to try and keep this fairly close to our eye. So this is going to the silhouette here is going to, if we draw it out too thick, it's going to look like it's bending. So to keep it straight, we need to let it also roll behind the parts. That makes sense. So then coming around the top. Again, a lot of this is going to be by eye, so I'm going to try and, I've wrote, I'm around the other side of the paper now, so just trying to keep this as smooth as I can. Difficult parts are down to these corners. And at the top. Now, we do have some real problems here. This is looking strange. So this part here comes around and joins on to our first profile. So it's gonna be time for an eraser here fairly soon. Like if, if we look at the silhouette, it's not too bad right now. So I'm just looking at my part. Try to see what's happening. So I'm just carefully discovering the right shape, right? Trying to keep it looking like we know it does because it's in our hand or we have a photo of it or whatever it is. And searching for the right shape here. We know we've got a flatter profile in the middle where the rope is going to sit. And it's time for a bit of erasing here. Now, just carefully erasing the sort of bad guesses at the start. So, then again, just trying to find that edge. 
Again, this is not art, so we're not trying to make a perfect, uh, pristine sort of uh, part here. We're just trying to keep it uh, on screen and, sorry if you missed some of that stuff at the top here, trying to keep it uh, fairly good uh, as far as correctly look like a carabiner that we have. It's just carefully sweeping around. So just looking at the part here, there's a, somebody's grinding it, so it's kind of a flatter profile. It's, it's, not, it's not flat like this front part, but it is flattened, so we should sketch that out. It helps the viewer to see what's going on. So essentially, I'm going to show what's happening. Now we have this back edge. There is a curve in between here, so this is too tight. So I'm going to tidy this up a bit. So I want to say this is flat, but rounded. And then this kind of heads off across. We've got this line here. We could, for example, aim at some center. It doesn't really matter. Just gonna try and show that there's some flatness through these two parts and a curve in between. Above that, for example, up here at the top, it's our maximum point. So maybe up here, we've got this fairly curved surface. Comes down. Halfway across. This is where you just have to kind of use your eye as best you can. Right, if we go straight down, it's going to look strange. It's like the we kind of need to sweep the profile. It's going to be more downish, and we need to show that this is also curving out. Now, one thing that I'm starting to see is this line here is starting to not help. Right, it's kind of switching from point to point. So what I want to do is show that this line here, this curve, actually leads out to this. So this edge, which I can double up now, is where it curves from a fairly flat surface into this thicker bottom part to wear or hold extra material where the rope is going to be putting a lot of stress. As we come around the corner, this is our dilemma. If we draw a contour line, say, if we're kind of pointing at the centers here, we're going to have 45, except 45. So just tidy that up a bit. So 45, 45. It's going to curve around and hide around the back. If we want it, we would have a line in the back. So maybe we can see that there, hopefully. So what we have to do is show how that connects. So these two faces are, our shapes are kind of the same. So what we're doing here is running through some old construction to try and show that face curving around. The dilemma is what to do here. You can just run it out. Or do whatever you would like to do. Something that for you makes sense. Uh, and again, just maybe lighten some lines. This gives us a good sort of view of this face here. Again, if you want, you can continue this around, but to me, these are not really joined lines. So but once we have that flatter face, I'm going to continue this line all the way along. This line is kind of in the middle, 45, 45. You can see some errors before. But what direction is it going? It's kind of coming from the middle. So no, this is not the right line, so more like so. Maybe in between. 
Is it actually flat? Not bad. We're going to introduce a small curve here. So instead of keeping it perfectly flat, we'll say it's curved and curved. Starting to like this set of edges. That's good. Again, we're kind of having a moving center here, so this one might be pointing this way. So, got a slight curve here. I'm gonna shift this construction line to be more in projection and just kind of lighten up this error. Again, center. This line will be almost hidden. So, we've got almost enough to, again, see that we've got a fairly flat line here. What I'm going to try and do here is fix this up. I don't know if it's hard to see this, but I've made an error here with this shape. There's actually a lobe on this. So again, just kind of feeling along, not worrying about getting everything perfect at the start, but just keeping things smooth and steady. So you can see here what I've done. Error. So instead of connecting this to this, I've connected it incorrectly. So wrong and right. So not bad. Just having a look at this overall thing here. Uh, I'm going to leave this for now, uh, for a moment. What I am doing though is looking at this. So I'm looking at the angle of the bottom versus the top. I like this angle down here. Like this seems more correct to me. But the angle at the top is not quite right. And so if I follow this line up, I can see that I've got some problems here. What I think is, I should have pulled this back further. This is okay because the back of the gate is where it is. The problem is this component part is not quite right. So I'm going to actually, before I get carried away up here and start changing a lot of stuff, I'm just gonna see if I can sort out this front edge. So again, lightening things out. If we say that this is the same, but they've cut out a chunk, then that's the sort of expectation we'd have Again, on the hidden part, 45 degrees leads us again right through. So will we be able to see the front part of this? It's not completely clear. So again, I'm going to use a thinner pencil here, sorry. And so just trying to Get things correct here. I'm using, again, sorry, a thinner pencil. This looks better compared to the rest. It doesn't look like it's twisted anymore. So my goal is to make this look straight. That seems better. So I can now, okay, there's my corrected shapes. Again, just kind of selectively erasing some lines. I'm not getting too aggressive here because a lot of them are still correct. We're just rotating around this front top surface here. This comes down and joins in and we end up with perhaps a happier shape. Emphasize the corner and the spreading out of that part from this in point of interest in here. We now have our part going into and hiding within the gate. It's looking better. So again, 
just making sure we get this in smooth. So we've got our part coming across. Now, is this correct? No, it has to come across like so. so again, if we're erasing off screen here just to clean my eraser, but this one is problematic. So I'm gonna clean this out here a bit just to make it more obvious what the correct edges are. Now, what I don't want to do is have these two parts overlap too much. This is not clear what's going on in here. So again, at risk of not being completely correct, I'm just going to use my thinner pencil to change the shape of this enough that we can see that these are two separate parts now. It's better. So, Again, getting into the gate again. Just trying to keep it symmetrical around the middle. Again, if your edges get a little thick, that's okay. And trying to introduce this idea that there's a cone or a conical surface in here where the chamfer is existing. Just using my eraser and emphasizing with the pencils now this conical surface it's also the bottom of the gate the snap ring or the retaining snap ring or whatever the designers would have called it. Again, just trying to get it looking correct. There may be a small change here where the back of that slot maybe pokes through slightly. Again, we'll come back to it later. And then the rivet starting to become a thing now. Now the temptation is to avoid the uh, knurling, but we won't do that. I'm going to use my smaller pencil. We've got this sort of center line here, and we're going to have knurling going in a... It's not going to be straight, it's going to be curved. Almost like a crosshatch. Not as bad. Now it becomes difficult over here. I'm just going to... Oh. There's an undo button on that. Knurling becomes difficult around the edges. One thing we can do, kind of flattens out, is to show kind of a shape of the knurl on the silhouette, which kind of gives the viewer or kind of gives the viewer a view of, uh, an idea, sorry, of what is going on here. So there's a strange shape going on. Um, another way we can do it is to double the construction lines up. Uh, so for example, if I pick one here, kind of try and fix this up a bit while I'm at it. It's the dog's breakfast of my knurling. Uh, match up to these things a little bit at least. Knurling is complicated surface wise. It's it's fairly easy to have made. It's just a rolled on is essentially a texture, but trying to show knurling is problematic in a sketch and can be extremely painful if you're not willing to kind of let it go a bit out of control. 
uh, this is very difficult in, if you're trying to draw very precise sketches. Knurling is the, it can be, make your life into a living hell, but this sort of approach isn't so bad, perhaps. Now, the key here, again, is to emphasize where it's going to and from, because I've screwed up. What I actually have here is a, I've missed an edge right through here, which is not knurled. I'm also going to make a big deal about this shape. So using a thinner pencil now, just kind of pretending, I'm not counting these exactly or anything, I'm trying to show that there is an edge to this. Now we have a distinct error through here. So I'm going to erase. I'm quite, I'm leaning quite hard here. This is where I'm using the eraser as a essentially a white marker. Don't want that line anymore. I'm going to erase a, also down to the line and including the line that I drew on. So I'm going to continue doing the same approach that I used be below, just kind of making sure this lumpy corner edge sort of looking thing where the knurl ends. Come back and fix that later. Somewhat arbitrary, but the key thing here is at this point it all straightens out again. So we've got our going around the edge. And what I can do now is put a smooth corner where the neural starts. So it's kind of inboard. Again, just trying to keep my ellipses all nice and under control. And start to all about it, just finish off a bunch of edges. Now, if they become too dark, you have to decide if it's worth trying to fix or not. Turn around and emphasizing this snap ring. Again, using a thinner pencil now, which will give me darker lines. Uh, and trying to show the viewer what exactly is going on with these various parts. Okay, we're focused here. So the, the long march, I'll draw on the carabiner, sorry about This lasted longer than I expected. Not doing too bad though, right? So top edge of that face and then the inner ellipse, which is kind of going up, but slightly bigger than the, the bar of the gate or the inner part. I'm gonna go right through. So we've got this gap here, it should be clear. Again, if it starts to look a bit funny, keep it matched. Again, we don't need perfection here, but it should be at least reasonable. Shape. So again, looking through a bit short here, I'll just fix that up as I go along. Two faces around a flat It's 
not bad so far. It's not great, but it's not bad. So then trying to keep using, again, I'm not being too precise here at all. Um, just trying to show the overall shape, which is very important to the viewer here. Like, what is this that we're looking at? What are its larger shapes? Well, there's an inside hole here, which is, of course, part of its main function. How do you connect some rope together? So again, strangely now, using the mechanical pencil, which is quite small, to put a fairly hefty round uh, silhouette around here. So I'm trying to say this is all one piece. Because we do have a, a series of parts here in an assembly. So it's important to show everything that we can. In one sketch. So that's our inner surface. Again, if someone's looking a little light outside, going for the easy big curves first. And further smudging our sketch, which is okay. We end up with a. It's been a few. There's been quite a bit of question about how what is writing on the paper for me uh, while I sketch. Uh, this is just my habit. Uh, so, if we have a look here, I can to see uh, probably what's going on. I am resting on the heel of my hand quite a bit. I'm smudging quite a bit of lead around. That's okay. Uh, by the time I'm done this, my whole hand will be, that part of my hand will be black from lead, which is okay. Uh, just trying to darken up the lines so that the, the incorrect lines or the construction lines all kind of fade away. Now, what are we doing here? There's uh, two parts coming together. And this one goes inside. I want to be quite clear about that inside part. To make that face, set of faces obviously together, we would like to parallel reality, parallel on the sketch, and show this group of parts come together as well. So this flat surface comes down and around. It's maybe not clear enough yet. We'll try some other stuff. Down here at the bottom, for example, through where the rivet is, we'd like to put some construction to help the viewer out. It doesn't close down, it's not tangent, but it is rounded. This, on the other hand, is flat and about 45 degrees. This is flat. So we can add construction as we see fit. So for example, down in here, there is a flat surface here. It goes all the way up. Continues on. So it's unusual that somebody would make the effort to join these together, but they should look visually, oops, visually similar, at least they're not exact. If you want, for example, you could put a line through there and then have the same Coming on through. Continuing on with our silhouettes. Smoothing out the contour, unless I've run out of pencil. You'll find yourself burning through quite a bit of lead with this stuff. Oh, trying to get around the camera by uh, mount here. Sorry, get through there. Got a bit of a lump here, strangely. So just thicken up the corner of this, or the edge of this, and maybe get the eraser in there. It's kind of bad in here. So just so it doesn't view as being too uh, bad. Kind of clean that off a bit and put our Construction lines back on. 
won't, it won't do any harm to do this. It actually also acts as a sort of highlight at the top of the part, which isn't too bad, coincidentally. Now, if you wish, like we could finish here, uh, like it's not that bad. But one thing we could do is do a bit of cross hatching here to show uh, where uh, things are. I'm going to use this uh, thick pencil and a bit of smudging. Uh, the reason for this is I just want to show what's going on in this area here. So it, it's a little confusing in here. So I want to show that this is kind of cut out, not blending in. So I can use a sort of a crosshatchy pattern with some smudging just or smearing just to show what's kind of happening here. As we go around this corner, this is going to disappear. So I'm trying to emphasize that flatness in there. If we've got it on this, we should do it down here as well. So again, just starting on the inside and showing that this, in a way, this part right through here is a kind of a functional surface. Right, we want to show that the rope rides on this edge here. So what I'm going to do is kind of try and show the viewer that this is all one sort of contiguous surface that is functionally required. So again, let it smear out as we get tall, as we get towards the top here. Just using the tip of my finger. Uh, you can use whatever you have to hand if you have other, like for example, rolled up pieces of paper or whatever you find convenient. Uh, that's also possible to get water soluble stuff, uh, lead, uh, which will smear easily. Um, the key here is just to show enough and not go too far. Uh, if you just keep working it, you'll end up turning the whole thing into a black silhouette, which again, is not really much help if you're trying to show people how it's used. So again, trying to show the curvatures and the shapes that we're at. Again, we might want to add some verticals on top of that smear doesn't do any harm and kind of helps the person or the viewer see what's going on. This is quite smudgy now because I've been riding it with my hand quite a bit. Uh, it's often not a bad idea to go ahead here and kind of use the eraser. I'm using the corner of it quite large to just tidy up the kind of empty spots. I'm not going to get carried away with this because I have some construction I'd like to keep. But just tidy things up a bit so that you can not make your viewer too crazy uh, trying to understand what's going on and not look too messy, perhaps. Uh, it is easy to take it off. Uh, again, not scrubbing here, not at all. So this is just light I'm trying to show what's going on and keep the sketch a little bit tidy. But again, don't go too crazy, like you don't want to lose your construction. And there we go, that is a very rough way of drawing a technical object, a carabiner. Uh, so is the scale perfect? Well, probably not. Uh, this would be ready for CAD. Uh, for example, you could start to put some dimensions on this, uh, so on and so forth. But the key here today was just to get used to uh, getting some stuff sorted so that we could see kind of the general shapes. Didn't avoid the um, cr the knurling too much. Again, we could do some more work in here. Like, for example, we could start to go through here and emphasize all of these surfaces, which would be the top sort of diamond shapes. Uh, but again, that's that would be up to you uh, for the next a stage of this if you wanted to keep working on this but as far as I'm concerned I would leave the sort of larger event alone from now uh, there's enough here to see what's going on it's not perfect 
Uh, there are some, for example, discontinuities with how this works, but again, CAD is good at this and would give us a really good uh, emphasis. Just adding some extra pieces here to show, for example, shape. And like the, there's no thing here, and then it goes around the bar, up the corner, oh, sorry, up the corner, up and through. Right, so add contours as you see fit, just to emphasize shape uh, of profiles, for example, uh, depending on your part. Uh, for example, I've got to try and get back here and show that this part here is rounded. Right, so, you know, it resist the urge to overwork it, just do whatever has to be done. And there we go. We are now quasi done. Thanks for watching. Uh, there'll be some more videos on how to uh, kind of sketch out technical objects as we go through the semester here. Uh, thanks for watching.